Fine. Now coming to Article 20. See, basically, <coughs> Article 20 is protection in respect of conviction for offences. There, there are three important provisions here. So, one is ex post facto law in common parlance known as retrospective law. The second is double GO party and third is self-incriminating events. So, basically, what is this? What is this? What do we mean by this? Right? Let us uh, try to understand. What do we mean by this? According to Article 20, Class 1, a criminal law should not be given a retrospective effect. So, it is, it is applicable only to criminal laws, not to the civil laws. So, this is a question. Right? Article 20, Class 1, protection is only against criminal laws. Meaning, you cannot declare any action as a criminal act or an offence. A criminal act is an offence. After, <coughs> at the time of committing that act, if there was any law. So, that is what Article 20 says. So, Article 20 provides for this one. See, protection against retrospective laws. According to Article 20, Clause 1, any person can be punished only for violation of law. So, the Supreme Court has interpreted this way. What is an offence? Any action that violates a law is an offence. And to be counted as vile offence, the law which is said to have been violated must be in force at the time when it was committed. Meaning, you cannot pass a law to declare an act that was committed before passing of the law as an offence. That is why we call it as retrospective. You should not give retrospective effect to a law. Or, the law must not be ex post facto. Both mean same. Ex post, ex post facto means giving a law retrospective effect. To declare an action committed as offense, even though the act was committed before the law was enacted. <laughs> Similarly, <coughs> the punishment if there was an offence committed. See, there is a law. So, to consider anything in a, as an offence, the court has said that to consider anything as an offence, that should be a law. The law should have been violated, only then it is an offence. And the law must be a constitutionally valid law. It should not be an unconstitutional, it, it should not be a law that has been declared as invalid by court. It should be constitutionally valid. Third, Third, the law must be in force at the time of commitment of that offence. And another important thing what the article 20 class 1 says is the punishment for any such act, even if the law is in force, even if there was a law that is constitutionally valid in force and violating that law an action has been committed to count that, to count as offence, right, to count as offence, still the punishment should not exceed beyond what the law has prescribed. So, these two protections Article 20 class 1 gives. Clear? Fine. Then, then comes Article 20 class 2. Article 20 class 2, see, look at here. This one, this box. This box, this is the most important, Article 20 class 1. Fine. Now, Article 20 class 2 deals with double jeopardy. So, it is termed as double jeopardy, but what article 20 class 2 says is no person shall be prosecuted and punished. This and is very important for the same offence more than once. <coughs> Here again, we have to re, I mean we have to bring down what we saw for article 20 class 1. When will you get the protection for double jeopardy? That when will this protection be available to somebody? The court has said, number one, there should be a law which is constitutionally valid. There should be an act of violating that law. 
that will be called as offense right then for this the person is prosecuted before a court of law right huh? then there is a conviction the court has convicted him and based on the conviction there is a sentence and based on the sentence there is a punishment if this procedure has already been followed then for the same offense another prosecution before a court of law and a sentence and punishment should not be imposed why we have to discuss this in detail is because sometimes there again it became a, there was a case a government officer was ar was arrested for corruption under the prevention of corruption act because of that he is being subjected to disciplinary actions of the de department will this be double jeopardy he has been already there is a law prevention of corruption act valid law there is a corruption meaning an offense has been committed the law is in force the corruption has been committed an offense is committed for that he has been prosecuted the court has convicted him sentenced and punished because of this the department takes disciplinary action and dismisses him from service now this person moves the court stating that he is being subjected to double jeopardy and according to article 20 class 2 this is not correct now the court said this will not be double jeopardy because constitution says no person shall be prosecuted and punished here there is no prosecution involved already there, there is only one prosecution involved the conduct rules say if you are indulged in a criminal act because of that a case has been filed and you are punished then that according to the conduct rules then you are not eligible to continue in that service because you are breaking breaching the term of contract of employment hence the disciplinary action since there is no prosecution involved this is only a consequence of prosecution hence this will not be considered as double jeopardy clear so that is the most important thing to be understood here look at this paragraph disciplinary proceedings not double jeopardy all right then comes the third one 20 class 3 according to 20 class 3 right self incriminating evidence again you have to take the same sequence supposing a person has been found to have committed an offense against a law that was constitutionally valid in force in the process of trial before the court he should not be forced to be a witness against himself that is self incriminating evidence or self incriminating witness clear to you but to take the protection of article 20 class 3 these conditions are important the person accused of the offense must be compelled to be a witness the element of compulsion must be present and the compulsion is to be a witness against himself then he will be protected under article 20 class 3 however the documents that are see here look at the protections available only in case in which a person is compelled to be a witness against himself now comes a question can there are two persons x and y x is the offender y is not according to article 20 class 3 x cannot be compelled to give witness against himself now the question is can y be compelled can y be compelled how do you say <sighs> because he is not compelled to be a witness against himself 
he is compelled to be a witness in this case. For example, X commits a murder. Let us assume when you are going down, you see a group of boys bullying a girl, stalking her, utilizing her, and trying to molest her. Alright, you are seeing that. Or look at put it this way: this is your house. You have a CC camera installed in your house. Also, you are also standing here and this incident happens in front of you. Can the police compel you to give the footage of the CCTV? Can the police, after looking into the CC footage, they find that you are also standing, you are a witness. You are, in, in, you are also a witness to that, you are seeing, it is happening in front of your eyes. Based on this footage, can they compel you to be in evidence, I mean, be witness in the court of law? How? And why do you say that no? That is what Madras High Court gave a judgment which was later upheld by the Supreme Court. The Madras High Court said, Article 20, Class 3 protects only in case of self-incrimination. It does not give the freedom to anybody and everybody to be a witness. Being a witness is not your choice. You have to assist the, it is part of your fundamental duty. Right? So, police can call for the CC evidences, footages and they can compel you to be an evidence if they know that you have been in on the spot and if they come to know that you are you know you have witnessed it fine sir what in case i don't want to come that's where madras high court passed an order stating that the police can call anybody summon anybody to be a witness so they have to send a summon if you did not respond to the police summon, the summon will be served from the court. If you are not receiving the summon for some reason or if your whereabouts are not available, known, then the court said publish it in the leading newspapers and other media. The summon will be the address whatever is in the record. The summon will be pasted on the door of your house. The address what is on record. But in spite of that you are not available. You are not appearing before the court. It will be published in the newspaper. If you are not still coming, an arrest warrant can be issued against you. Alright. Because you cannot take refuge behind article 20 class 3 because Article 20, class 3 provides only for the offender, right? Only the accused. And if and if only he has been compelled to be a witness against himself, Article 20, class 3 will be available. Otherwise, it won't be available. Furthermore, there are certain exemptions as well. See, look at this sentence. Any object or document recovered from the accused in the search and seizure operation will not be considered self-incriminating. They are the corroborating evidences, primary evidences. For example, in the corruption, the DVIC conducts a raid in the house of house and other uh, related areas of a government officer who has been accused of corruption. There they recover documents, say property documents. To prove that, this was a disproportionate asset. So, he is holding assets that are disproportionate to his known sources of income. Can that be a self-incriminating evidence? No. Because these are the primary evidences. How can you prove it without this document? Either he has to, an officer is caught red-handed. Over and above that, how will you prove that he is corrupt? He can only say, for example, the concerned officer X, his son or daughter, O and A, the properties with the inter in the name of his wife or his blood relatives, enforcement directorate will do that. 
GST officials can do that because GST is government money. If I collect GST and don't pay to the government, it's a criminal act. So in that case, as Ademari, when somebody has committed murder, the article used for murder is recovered from the offender, the knife. Those will be evidences. They are not self-incriminating. All right. Only then, only in apart from these other cases, only Article 20 will be available. Clear.